Hey guys, Christos here and welcome back for another video. As you can see on the screen today, I'm gonna to be showing free stocks that I am gonna be buying in May. And one thing I haven't noticed here, all of these free stocks I'm gonna be buying for the long term. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Obviously down the bottom there, it says I am not a financial advisor. I'm just someone that is sharing my opinion and my own journey into the stock market. So if you are cool with that, hit that like button down below and let's get into the stocks. Okay, so starting off with the first stock of the day, I have spoken about this on the channel before and that is of course Disney stock. So um, I made a video about three weeks ago talking about the main reasons as to why I am personally investing into Disney stock for the long term, but I am gonna briefly go over them today, but not quite as in depth as that video. So if you do wanna go and check that one out, I will leave a link in the description down below for you to do so. But basically I have three main reasons as to why I am investing in Disney stock and buying more positions in May. And this start off with the first one, and that is the performance during the pandemic. And what I'm actually gonna do is show you this chart here, which actually compares Disney's performance over the pandemic. So we're looking at April 2020 all the way to April 2021, I'm guessing what that is there over the quarters. And basically what this is, is the difference between the Disney stock and the general S&P 500 performance. And as you can see, Disney stock being the purple line, it has gone up 91.75% during this period, whereas the S&P 500, which is the top 500 companies, in America has only gone up 58.95%, which is of course a very good milestone. But what I am really, really impressed about with this is that they have managed to do that with one of their biggest revenue streams being shut, which is of course the Disney World and Disneyland theme park. So they have been shut pretty much as of March 16 for almost a year. I think they are now starting to open back up with limited capacity, but these guys have been shut for almost a year and they have managed to kind of still keep up, but not even just keep up, but beat the S&P 500 over that time. And um, a lot of that is gonna come down to my second reason, of course, which is Disney Plus. So of course, if you didn't know, Disney Plus is Disney's kind of answer to Netflix, where basically you can view all of the Disney films exclusively on Disney Plus now. And then you have some other series such as Star Wars, um, Avengers, um, and then there's some other things as well and this has been a massive plus for Disney especially in the pandemic but one thing that has really really impressed me and I've mentioned this in that video is that for someone like myself I will admit I'm not the biggest Disney fan this service here would really appeal to the avid Disney watcher maybe someone with a couple of kids where they can just whack a Disney film on and go and do what they want to do but for me it's not really that appealing I'm kind of not into the Disney films I do like Star Wars and Avengers but it's not really something that I can kind of just keep watching and just really be amused. Obviously with Netflix, they do offer a lot more in variety, but one thing that has been fixed in the international version of Disney Plus is they have just introduced what is called Star, which is basically the replacement for Hulu because at the moment in America, Disney Plus comes with Hulu, which is basically like, um, what's the best way to put it? Um, alternative viewing to just Disney films and stuff like that. And what that actually did was made Disney Plus a lot more of an attractive platform in America, but in the UK, it was really just, you've got Disney films, Star Wars and Avengers. And for me, that just wasn't enough until they announced that they were releasing Star. And as you can see here, it says Disney unveils Star, it's Hulu replacement for international Disney Plus subscribers. And it sits right inside the Disney Plus platform and you do not have to pay any extra for it. And this has been about since February the 23rd and it has made such a big difference. A difference so big that Disney have now had to up their estimates on how many subscribers to the platform they think they are gonna get by 2024. And this is what really amazes me, guys, is that four years ago, let's just switch to this screenshot. As you can see here, 
Disney originally aimed to reach 90 million Disney Plus subscribers in four years, but has surpassed that in just 14 months. Obviously, a lot of that has been because of the stay-at-home restrictions due to the COVID-19 pandemic, as it just says there. However, what has happened now is that Disney, as you can see below, have now set a new goal of reaching 230 to 260 million subscribers by 2024, which is going to catch up Netflix massively and I personally like I said this in the other video I think Disney Plus eventually especially if they keep adding to the star and Hulu platforms is going to overtake Netflix in the long run it just has to happen I personally think so um, that is the second main reason as to why I'm buying Disney stock the third main reason is because of the park expansions they have just announced what I'm going to do is switch over to here and as you can see here they have just announced announced a major theme park expansion to their Anaheim Park. I think it's called Disney Forward. One thing is I'm not actually too sure what it is going to include, but by these concept images, it looks pretty cool and it looks pretty big. And I believe they said it's going to be a multi-year expansion. And whenever Disney announces expansions or they release new parts to their parks, the income in ticket sales just goes through the roof because people local and from afar want to go and see those new attractions. But going back to Disney stock, one of the main plays that I'm really going for is a five year play on this. I'm really interested to see if they hit those estimates by 2024, 2025, and to see um, if that does take over Netflix in the future. I think this stock could absolutely skyrocket in terms of growth. It's not not a short term play like none of my plays are. It's very much buying and holding for the long term. Next stock up is Walmart stock. So um, this is one that is of course another massive stock. Don't worry guys, the next stock that I have is one that's a little bit more under the radar, which I actually think has more upside potential than both of these. But yeah, of course, everybody knows what Walmart is. It is the largest uh, retail store overall in the United States. Um, absolutely massive company there. I believe the stat is there is a Walmart within 10 miles of 90% of the American population. So, so many stores, so much revenue that comes in for this company. And I've got some really good reasons as to why I think this is a really good play for the long term. Once again, I don't think this one is a very good short term play if you're that kind of person that likes to get in and get out of stocks. But let's just take a look. The first thing that I want to talk about is the great financials that it actually has. So just looking at the total revenue for Walmart, one thing I've learned a lot about recently since practicing to analyze stocks and stuff like that is that you should be really focusing on the consistent growth in total revenue of a company. And one thing that you can see from 2018 to 2019 to 2020, the revenue growth is extremely consistent and extremely steady as well. So um, that's something that is really good and something I always always look for when analyzing a company. It basically tells me that the company is still growing and this one here is really growing at a steady rate. The next thing that I want to talk about actually is that it is a recession proof stock. So we haven't had a recession now for what is it 13 years. I know they say one is due every eight to 10 years maybe. And of course with the pandemic, with everything that's been going on, people are talking about recessions coming up, crashes, even though no Nobody knows anything on what's going to happen. But one thing that is really good about Walmart stock is that it has always performed well in a recession. What I've got is a screenshot here, which basically says even beyond its dividend king status, which we will get into as well, Walmart stock has been known to stand firm when times get tough. Look over the data from the past five recessions, 1980, 81, um, 90 to 91, 2001, 2007 to 2009, you get the point. Uh, basically what it says is that Walmart stock has actually averaged a 42% gain during those recessionary periods. This of course shouts out to me that even in a recession, people still need to eat, people still need to be able to buy their groceries. And of course, Walmart is always going to be there for that, which is probably why that stock hasn't been affected as much during a recession. So this is a really good point to think about right now, because a lot of people are kind of hesitant as the stock market keeps going up. They're like, when is it going to actually drop and crash? Maybe Walmart is a good option if you have 
that in the back of your mind. Now, here are the two things that I'm really, really bullish about, about Walmart. Um, and I've got some really good points I think I can make on that. And that is number one, they are investing heavily into e-commerce. And number two, they are becoming an omni-channel retailer. So let's get into the first one, which is the e-commerce. Now, this is the percentage of e-commerce sales that has happened in America in 2020. Of course, one thing I have to mention, Retail sales online have increased massively over the last year for obvious reasons. But one thing that is really interesting to look at is the change in retail sales and comparing that to Amazon. So, of course, Amazon is going to dominate this sector here. But one thing when you look at Walmart, they have seen a 65.4% change in e-commerce sales over the past year, which is a massive credit to them. And one thing they have been doing is investing massively into their e-commerce platform. The next thing I wanna talk about is this omni-channel retailing and how it is becoming a massive success. Now, if you didn't know what omni-channel is, it's basically being able to sell on the internet, being able to sell retail on your mobile phone and all of those kind of things. And this is something where Walmart has kind of seen themselves in a really lucky position. One thing you have probably noticed recently is that Amazon have actually started opening up physical stores. Now, to me, when I look at this, this seems like they are going back in time. Of course, everybody's talking about you need to get online, but why are Amazon opening retail stores. Surely that would be kind of going against the grain a little bit, but this is because Amazon want to become an omni-channel retailer. And Walmart, of course, whilst I can't actually tell you how many stores they actually have on the top of my head, but one thing I did state a second ago that 90% of the United States population lives within 10 miles of a Walmart. And one thing they have invested in massively over the past year is their grocery pickup, which is now available at 3,000 600 Walmart locations and as you can see down here what you can see is the growth in this business model so pick up curbside at the store which is the grocery pickup where you don't have to get out your car you just order online you drive to the store actually in the UK this is really efficient pretty much all of the supermarkets offer this so we are actually ahead of America on this one for once um, but as you can see over the months of 2020 this has increased massively and this is something that Walmart have as well and they are now moving into e-commerce and investing heavily into e-commerce, but they also have the stores as leverage to be able to do that. And once they have established fully on the e-commerce side of things, they are going to have a really powerful omni-channel retail solution in my opinion. All right, so the final stock that I want to talk about that I have just purchased is going to be Tattooed Chef. Now, this is a stock that I have only recently just heard about after actually watching some other financial YouTubers mention it. And then I decided to look a lot deeper into it myself because one thing I always recommend, even though you guys are watching this video, even if someone is talking about a stock that they are happy about or they are investing in, always do your own research as well. And I did a lot of research on this stock before I made that investment. But let's talk about Tattoo Chef, what it actually is. And basically what this business is, is it is fast food, ready meals for vegans, vegetarians and people that are gluten free as well. So if we just take a look at some of their products, as you can see, we've got the organic acai bowl, which is gluten free and vegan. We've got um, different types of pizzas, um, gluten free, vegetarian, vegan. It is just the healthy alternative to quick and easy meals and I, absolutely love this company. Even though, one thing I have to say, which I'm not very happy about, I haven't been able to try any of their food yet, but the first thing that I did do was called up a couple of friends over in America and they have already found out about this company as it is growing in Walmarts, Targets, and stuff like that. And um, they are very, very impressed. And one thing I also did was I actually watched a couple of food reviews on YouTube of people, not even anything to do with the stock market, people just giving their honest reviews. And um, it was all very, very positive. So let's now get into some of the main reasons why I am 
really bullish about this stock. And let's start off with number one, and that is the solid financials for such a small company. And as you can see, the first thing that I put down there is their enormous growth. So once again, looking at the income statement of this company, the first time it posted its financials was in 2019. And then when you actually look at 2020, just look at the growth in revenue. That's almost double in revenue that they have made in just one year. And if you look at the gross profit as well, that also follows. So the revenue and the profit of this company is extremely positive. One thing that is really, really positive, and I haven't seen a company that has this much difference. If you know a company that has a difference like this, let me know below, where their total liabilities are so low compared to their assets. This is absolutely fantastic. And one thing that they have, which is really positive, and I'm gonna get into that in a second, is a massive amount of cash in the bank. This is going to be really good for growing and buying different companies. Like I said, I'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, moving on to the second thing, which is a massive plus for me, and that is this company solves a massive problem. Now, I can tell you firsthand how much of a problem that this company would solve if it was based in the UK. And I personally believe it will make its way to the UK, of course, at some point. When that will happen, who knows? I know they are currently expanding into more local companies to the uh, local countries, sorry, to the US. But UK, I don't think I've read anything about expanding over here yet. But this solves such a massive problem, guys. I am somebody that has sat there countless amount of times and said, I wouldn't mind giving veganism a go. I wouldn't mind being vegetarian for a week. But always the problem that always comes to me is convenience and this company solves that right here. Their entire range is healthy meals, healthy, vegan, vegetarian, and even more gluten-free. I have somebody in my family that is gluten-free and every time we eat or every time we go out, this company solves that problem for you and the food is apparently, whilst I can't say it myself, really good as well. So in my opinion, you buy companies that solve problems. And if you have a company that solves a problem like this, it is only going to be good news for that company. So I really want to emphasize on this a lot. This company solves a massive problem and I can't think of a company that does it as well as this one. And just so you didn't know, all of these are available online through the tattoochef.com website, but they are now available in Targets and Walmarts as well, and they are growing by the day. The next thing I want to talk about here is the actual unbelievable buying opportunity that there is in this stock. So if we actually take a look at this stock over here, the PE ratio for this stock is actually 10.43, which is massively undervalued, simply because recently we have seen a massive dip in this stock but this just presents a massive buying opportunity for me as you can see at one point this stock was $20.14 um, it dipped all the way to $16 at one point maybe $15 I think it reached as well but it's currently at $17.70 which I think is a massive opportunity to buy this stock I personally believe that within this year I can see this stock doubling my personal opinion. However, one of the reasons why I do think it's gonna be doubling is this expansion and the growth opportunities that it has. And that is recently, pretty much one day ago, yet May the 3rd, Tattooed Chef have entered agreements to acquire New Mexico food distributors and cast in tortilla factory. Now, why is this really good? What I'm gonna do is quickly read this to you. Tattooed Chef Inc, a leader in plant-based foods, today announced that it has entered agreements to acquire new Mexico food distributors and cast and tortilla factory. The transactions have been unanimously approved by the Tattoo Chef's board of directors and Tattoo Chef expects to see close of these transactions in early May, which is extremely quick for a deal like this. Now, whilst that sounds all okay, what is really impressive is this speech from the uh, president of Tattoo Chef, where he says, we have seen tremendous growth in the Tattoo Chef brand, and these two facilities will allow us to diversify our product lines and significantly increase our manufacturing capabilities to capitalize on the 20 billion Hispanic Southwest food sector and beyond. However, the thing that really, really impresses me is this bit at the bottom. They have said that at full capacity, we believe that the foods of New Mexico can contribute up to $200 million 
annually in revenue in the next two to three years. So they are paying $35 million for a company that is going to turn them over $200 million in just two to three years based on their estimates. What a fantastic acquisition that is. This is all for them having cash in the bank and being able to make these moves and actually having a product that is really going to be attractive to the general consumer. Yeah, just going back to this product once again, guys, like one thing I think we all have to come to the realization of uh, whether we like it or not, whether we believe it or not, the world is becoming a more vegan friendly place. There are more and more people moving to become vegans and vegetarians. Um, and I will be honest, guys, looking at some of these meals here, um, you know, like look, look at some of this stuff here. Like what we got, like the enchilada bowl. It just looks unreal. You know, like stuff like this is making me want to become vegan. So um, this is obviously working. The website is so clean as well. One thing I have to say, just coming from a tech background, um, they really do make these products look good. Like even look at that, the Buffalo Cauliflower Burgers. I would buy that 1000%. But yeah, I am really happy with this stock. I'm really excited about this stock in the future. Definitely once again for the long term. This is a very, very new stock. I haven't piled all my money into it as of yet. I've only invested about 500 pounds into this company um, just as a starting investment amount. And then hopefully over time, um, I will add to this position. But overall, I think this is going to be a really good stock in the long term. But once again, it's just my opinion. But there you go, guys. There are three stocks that I am buying in May. In fact, I bought all three of these stocks today and I will be revealing them when I do my portfolio update around the middle of this month. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss that. Hit a like on the video if you found it valuable in any way, shape or form. But apart from that, I'll leave a couple of videos down on the side here for you. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Take care.